G'day fellas and welcome to a video where we're going to be talking about the upcoming changes to the town center. Yes, that is correct. The devs have heard us. Town centers are too damn strong and they needed a nerf. So what is being changed? That's a great question. Let's take a look and see exactly what is going to be changed. Now, this is for every single civilization. There are changes. Well, except for one, but we'll talk about that in a little bit. So what is the change? The change is that the town center has a cost of 400 wood and 350 stone. So the stone cost has gone up by 50. In addition to that, it also takes an extra 30 seconds for you to make your town center. Now, of course, this number here, this two minute 30 number is not act actually representative of how long it takes to build a town center because typically you're going to be building a town center with, you know, five, six, seven, eight, 12, 55 villagers. So that number gets reduced down drastically, but it is an, an increase of 25% on the build time for the town center. So quite a big nerf there for the TC. So the question is, who does this affect worse than others because there are going to be civilizations that benefit more from this change and some civilizations that benefit less from this change so let's jump in we've got ourselves a brand new bam it's not a tier list even though it might look like it this is to determine where civilizations sit how badly this hits them and we're going to start off with the worst hit civilization the civilization that i'm sorry if you were a main of this civ rest in peace skull 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 it has been nerfed. That is massive. Now, you might be looking at that thinking, eh, it's not that big of a nerf, Drongo, because you're Italian, you're from New Jersey, and you like playing the Rus. Unfortunately, it is. Why is this a nerf to the Rus? Well, the Rus love to go for 2TC, 3TC, and when they do, all they're going to be doing is using their tickets. The Rus only really go for one landmark, that is the Golden Gate. And so the way that it works is you pay 100 gold and you get 150 of your resource that you desire. So in this situation, you're going to pay 100 gold, get 150 stone, pay another 100 gold, get another 150 stone, but unfortunately, that still leaves you 50 stone short. So you've got two options. Number one is that you can go and mine stone, whether that be, you know, do a bit of long distance mining, send five villagers out to the stone mine and subsequently collect that stone, bring it back to the TC, drop it off and then go build your second town center wherever you like and then repeat that for every subsequent TC that you want. You can also just drop down a mining camp. The other alternative, the other alternative, the next, the next option for you on the table uh, is that you wait an entire minute for your next ticket to arrive from your golden gate and you pay out that next 100 gold and then you drop down the se the second TC with that stone. So you'd have to go up to 450 stone for that. So whether we see players look to go for maybe an early wooden fortress and get their arrow slits in because you can pay 50 stone there and you're going to have to get the third ticket anyway, maybe that's the option, but then it, it's going to mean that you're going to need more gold in the early game anyway. So this is a big nerf to the Rus, a huge nerf because this really, this was their play style. That's what they loved to do. Now, the question is, so if, if we've got the Rus that are on the bottom and they get nerfed massively, who are the ones that benefit the most from this change? Well, I got good news if you're a fan of the Chinese. Ladies and gentlemen, huge buff, flames, fire, lit, lit, 100s, all that good stuff. It is coming in right now for the Chinese. And you might be wondering why the heck is this such a huge buff for China? Well, it's a massive buff for China because they can play 1TC Song Dynasty and it's, it doesn't affect them. Now, I know that there's people out there that are going to be saying, Drongo, that's not a real build order. 2TC Song Dynasty is where it's at. And if you want to be competitive, you're going to have to do 2TC Song, which means you're affected by this. That's true. But it also means if your enemy wants to match your town center power, that they're going to have to build a second town center, one more than you, and it's going to affect them even more adversely. So as a result, I'm calling this a big win, big win for China. It is a huge buff. There's fire, there's flames, and we're probably playing Guitar Hero because we're going through both of those. But uh, it's it's massive for China. So good stuff for them. Now, not only... or well, this isn't the only Civ that is affected positively by this change. Also, interestingly, we've got a French buff coming in because similarly to Song Dynasty, the French have got the ability to train villagers faster than any other civilization. And as a result, it means that they're pumping out more vills from 1TC, which means if you want to out-eco them, you're going to have to drop that second TC, which subsequently is going to make French a bit stronger. Uh, so because they've got those, those faster producing villages and they, they've got the ability to go for 1TC, and they're actually quite a strong civilization on 1TC, they've got a lot of good strats. You can just play a little bit of feudal, you can go for a semi-fast castle, you can just go for a direct fast castle, but this makes the guild hall viable again because now... Your likelihood to go for that second TC, slightly lower. Likelihood that your enemy is going to go for a second TC, slightly lower. And you might not think of this as a big change. You might look at this and go, look, Drongo, it's not that big. I'm not that fast. I don't think this is going to be that big. 
Well, you've got to consider when it comes to timings just how different this makes it because not only do you have to gather that extra 50 stone, but you've also got to go for that extra 30 seconds of build time. And as I said, it's not always going to be 30 seconds, but it is going to delay town centers. And it's going to mean that there are new timings that open up, which make French stronger, make some civilizations weaker, like the Rus. By the same token, maybe we just see, you know, a, a more delayed TC play style from the Rus, but that's going to definitely drop them down a few tiers. Now, in addition to the French being, well, having a small buff, we also see the Malians having a small buff. And once again, you might be thinking, why the heck are the Malians up here? Well, the Malians are up here because they get bonuses in the early game with their economy. Through the, the, um, through the pit mines, they're able to build up a huge amount of passive gold, up to 90 passive gold per pit mine. And so one of the ways that the enemy could mitigate the economic success that they would have is by going for a second TC. Well, the Malians don't have to go for a second TC if they don't want to. They've got enough of an economy in the early game uh, to mean that they can just stay on that one TC and play off that one TC. And as a result, it means it's a big, or well, not a big buff, a small buff here for the Malians. And in the same vein, we've also got the Ottomans that experience a small buff as well because they've got their military schools. And you need to think about the military school. Even though it doesn't, it, it's not gathering resource, it, 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 resources, it is generating resources for you, free units. And so you, you need to think about villager lines. If you were going to go look at villager lines, I don't know, let's go pull up a game and see if we can find a game with villager lines. Uh, let's have a look here. We go, we'll go to Crackety. Crackety's typically got some games with villager lines. So here's a game on Dry Arabia. So you need to think about like from a villager line perspective, okay, military schools give you a bump up on this villager line, even though you can't see it because they're, they're generating something for you for free. So you can stay on this one TC the whole time, but technically you're going up, 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 up a little bit. And it still maintains that same, that, that same, uh, that same linear growth because you're not adding in a million military schools. It's two, then it's three, then it's four. Uh, but it's still a small buff over to them. So look, I'm, I'm pretty happy as an Ottoman player uh, to be enjoying uh, that. Now, on the other side of the equation, which civilizations are nerfed by this? Just a small amount. So I would say the Abbasid dynasty have a small nerf here simply because they have a propensity to go for more town centers. You want to make more town centers with the Abbasid dynasty. It's part of your game plan. It's part of your strategy. And as a result, this means that you're going to be on, unfortunately, the bad side of this change. Now, I guess another thing that I should mention, I probably should have mentioned this from the outset, is the devs have said that this these changes aren't final. They might revert these changes. They might decide, no, we're not going to do it. But at the moment, the current pup has got this change on there. So we're gonna we're gonna leave it in there. So I, I think this is a small nerf for the Abbasid. As I mentioned, you know, if typically with the Abbasid, you always want to be up one TC over your enemy. They're kind of like the Zerg. You're just always expanding out, uh, and because of that, it is a, a it is a nerf to them. Um, for other civilizations, let's begin by talking with the Mongols. There's no real change for the Mongols uh, because quite literally there is no real change to the cost of their town center. That is correct. It's still 900 wood. So they didn't increase this to 950 wood or anything like that. They're like, oh, you know what? Mongol second town centers, it's not that strong. We'll just leave it. Now they did increase the time it takes for you to build the second town center. So there is a slight change there. But look, I think Mongols are a civilization that aren't really impacted much by this change. If anything, I think it might even be closer to a buff just because they do have a propensity to play off one TC unless they need to go for two TC in some matchups like versus French. Um, but other than that, I don't think any real change for the Mongols. For the English, now the English are a little bit affected by this. So this is, once again, it's a small buff to the English, very, very small minor buff, if you will. Uh, so this is a buff to the English landmark, the King's Palace, which is used probably 99% of the time. The King's Palace acts as a town center. It's got all the behaviors, all the technology, all the units and all the bonuses of the town center, but its cost didn't change. Its, it's uh, build time didn't change. And as a result, now this, this landmark becomes more viable. It becomes, more, uh, it becomes stronger uh, as a landmark because it's worth more. The resources for this have gone up. The build time stays the same while the build time for all other TCs have, have gone up. So think about it. You're playing the English. Maybe you open with a second TC. Maybe you're up against the French. Maybe they've opened with a second TC. They want to add in a third TC because they know you're going to be going for a third TC through your King's Palace. So you go to the third age, they're still investing that extra 50 stone, that extra 30 seconds that you didn't have to. So I don't think there's a huge change here, but there's there's no real change here. Definitely not enough to warrant it in, in, in the categories of the French and the Malians and the Ottomans in their buffs. Now, in addition to that, we've also got the HRE and the, the Delhi. Now, I'm putting both of these guys in uh, into the no real change. And once again, the the 
uh, the way I would say it for these guys is, look, they've got a... If, if anything, it's a slight buff to these civilizations, so a very small buff, just because they both have a propensity to play 1TC. Uh, so they've got a, 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 a stronger likelihood in the meta to just stick it with 1TC. And because of that 1TC play style, it becomes stronger because now other players are less likely to go for 2TCs or 3TCs, and it means that they, they're quite happy doing that. They can just play the 1TC. They don't, they're not thinking about expansion, and this doesn't really change them. So if anything, it's a, a very small buff, uh, but that is it. So anyway, that's the end of the video. I wonder what you guys think. Keep in mind, this is subjective, but obviously it comes from a relatively educated perspective. I've thought a little bit about this. Let's just say that much. What do you guys think, though? Is, is your favorite Civ nerfed? Are you, are you a Ross Lamer that's going to have to switch it up to the Chinese? I hope so. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching. And uh, hey, I'm looking forward to uh, playing plenty more games on this pub.